let's keep talking about Article 314, outlet, device, pole, and junction boxes, conduit bodies, fittings, handhold enclosures. Let's see what the next change is. All right, 314.25, dimensions of boxes. Boxes with cables entering through the back or sides now have specific requirements. All right, so here in the photograph, we've got a plastic box and they drilled it and installed an NM cable connector through the side of the box. Now, is that permitted? Uh, I don't know. I mean, probably not. I mean, the box probably isn't designed to have a hole drilled through it and an NM cable connector inserted into it. Um, I mean, is it is that going to kill somebody? Probably not. But, you know, you do have to follow instructions. So I'm not saying that this is okay, uh, but I am saying that maybe there's bigger fish to fry out there. So here we've got the cable entering through the side of the box. So outlet or device boxes with enclosed devices like the range receptacle here or utilization equipment must be large enough to accommodate the equipment. Cool, so we've got a general opening statement that says, listen, it has to be big enough to accommodate the stuff you're putting in there, fine. If we keep reading, the dimension includes the box itself plus any plaster rings, extension rings, or raised cover. So just like when we're doing a box fill calculation in 314.16, we're saying, look, the, the depth of the box is the sum of all of its parts, whether they're listed or not in this application. Remember in 314.16, when you're doing a box fill calculation, um, they have to be marked with their cubic inch capacity if you're, if you're going to be counting them towards the box fill. Here we're just saying, look, the, the depth of the box is the sum of its parts. For boxes that have 10 or 12 gauge conductors, the box has to have an internal depth of at least an inch and 3 16 So easy enough here, I've got my, my four square deep box or 1900 you know, deep box, depending on what part of the country you're in. It's two and an eighth, so we're good there. Here's where we start talking about the changes. If equipment extends into the box more than one inch, so a receptacle, then the box depth must be at least equal to the equipment plus a quarter of an inch. I think that makes good sense. We, we don't want the back of the receptacle touching the back of the enclosure. So how much distance do you need between the two? Well, you need at least a quarter of an inch. If the wiring extends through the back of the box, then you need an additional half inch. I, I think that is a good change. So if I'm coming through the back of the box and if you can kind of see back there, you've got your NM cable connector coming through the back, then I need that quarter inch that we normally require plus another half inch to accommodate for the NM cable connector. Yeah, good requirement. Side penetrations. If wiring for equipment enters through the side of a box, then one of these clearances must be met. And the code does clarify when it says side because you, know, you look at that and it's like, okay, well, what if I turn the box 90 degrees? Now it's not the side, it's the bottom. Okay, well, I mean, fair point, but the code does specify that the side of the box means any side of the box that's not the front or the back. So this is an example of a side penetration. All right, so what are the rules then if I'm penetrating through the side? The rear of the device must not extend beyond the center of the knockout. Okay, now it's one or two. You don't have to comply with both. So let's be clear on this. So here, this receptacle extends farther than the center line of the knockout. So item one is not complied with. I would have to look at item number two. Now, let's bear in mind here, that's a, that's a pretty narrow box. A, a single gang masonry box is what it looks like. So, you know, put it in a two gang box or a four square box, it might not be an issue. And then number two, the clearance between the side of the equipment and the side of the box must be at least a half inch. And looking at that picture there, it looks like that's probably not a half inch. So on this one, we're not measuring to the knockout, or excuse me, we're not measuring from the connector to the device, we're measuring from the wall of the enclosure to the device. So we need at least a half inch. So I think this change would make uh, this installation completely illegal. You cannot use a single gang masonry box with a receptacle and terminate and, and enter the box through the side of the box, which by the way, I think is good. Um, I, I think this is a bad idea. I think we, we can look at it and say, look, that's not a great decision. We ought to be coming through the top or bottom or potentially even the back of the box, but certainly not the side of the box when the device takes up 
you know, 95% of the box's width. So there you go, some new requirements for uh, enclosures containing devices in 314.24. So we'll see you on the next video where we start talking about wiring methods, article 320 up through 399. We'll see you then.